Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to update the nightstands in my bedroom. Stick around and I'll show you how we did it. Like most of my projects, we're going to keep everything really simple. We're going to use dimensional lumber and plywood to build everything. To start this project off, we're going to take some 2x4s to the miter saw and we're going to cut them down to size. Once everything's cut down to size, I'm going to take them to my table saw and join all the edges. Now that I've got the face flat as I can get it, I'm going to put it on the table saw and cut them down to 2 by 2s my farmhouse TV stand video, then you'll see that I did a lot of sanding for the tabletop. So to prevent me from doing that, I went out and got a planer. It's going to hopefully make everything a lot easier. To get these to the size I want, I'm going to plane about a quarter inch off each space. This will kind of give you an idea of what the size difference is. So I want to put a chamfer on the bottom of the table legs. So what I did was turn my miter saw to 30 degrees. I set a stop block and then I cut all the chamfers. So what these chamfers are going to do is help the nightstand from chipping or splintering at the leg when these are slid around on the floor. So the sides and the bottom of the nightstand are going to be made out of plywood. So I grabbed my circle saw on a straight edge and I cut everything down to rough width. Once all the plywood pieces are cut, I take them to my table saw so I can cut them to their final dimensions. To attach these side pieces to the legs, I'm going to use pocket holes. I grab some large clamps. So that way I can hold everything together so nothing moves around me when I screw in the pocket holes. But a little bit of wood glue, these pocket hole screws, and we're all good to go. Now, when I attach these two frames together, it's going to look like I'm doing them backwards. Because usually the pocket holes are going to be on the inside. But for what I'm doing, I don't want any pocket holes to show on the inside. And I'm going to end up covering up with trim. and attach the bottom off camera. It's attached using the same method I did for this size, pocket holes and wood glue. Now, since I've got everything assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage and start sanding it down so I can get it prepped. This way I have less sanding to do at the end. had some leftover 1x4s from another project, so what I did was resaw them on the table saw. Basically what that means is just cutting them in half. Then I took them to my planer and I milled them down until they were about a quarter inch thick. I'm going to use these 1x4 boards as the trim for my nightstand. measuring mistakes when I'm lining up trim like this is I put it up against the project and just mark out as far as I needed to go. 
once I get it to where I want it, I simply take it to my miter saw and sneak up on that cut until it's a perfect fit. Once I'm finished setting up the trim that's going to cover up the pocket holes, I set up to do the traditional farmhouse eggs. Now the way I do it is I get a speed square or something with a straight edge. I mark the angle of where I want it to cut and I just match it up with my miter saw. Now the same rules apply here. I'm going to sneak up on the cut until it's a perfect fit. Once I have everything cut to size the way I want it, I'm just going to nail everything down using my brad nailer and wood glue. Once I finish doing all the X's, I grab some wood filler and start filling in all the nail holes and the gaps. I let it sit long enough just so it can dry and then I'm going to sand it all smooth. Once it's sanded smooth, it should look like one whole X. Now it's time to work on the top. So I grab some 2x8s, take them to my miter saw, and I start cutting down to rough width. This way, I can have a little extra space in case something doesn't line up right. And if you guys want to see a video on my new miter saw station, just let me know in the comments down below. So moment of truth guys, this is why I bought the planer. Hopefully it makes this tabletop so much easier to put together. But I end up planning this down about a quarter inch, kind of the same thing I did with the two by twos. Now that I have the top plane down, I'm gonna use pocket holes to attach them all. To attach this tabletop, I'm gonna do what I always do, pocket hole screws, and wood glue. I definitely think the planer was a good buy. This is the flattest table I've ever had before sanding. But as you know, no project is complete until you sand it down. Since I was able to get everything so smooth with the planer, it didn't take a lot of sanding to get everything the way I wanted to. So I started with 120 grit, moved up to 180, and then finished with 220. Once I had everything sanded up to 220, I put a round over on it using my router. Once I had the round over on there, I grabbed some more sandpaper and then sanded those edges smooth. So this nightstand is going to have one drawer in it. It's going to be made with half inch plywood. making my drawers when I'm using half inch plywood is using my brad nailer and wood glue. Once I finished with that, I like to come back and reinforce everything with countersunk screws. I want my drawers to look a little more professional, so I'm going to cover up the plywood edges with iron on edge band. So this edge band has an adhesive on the back that once it's heated up, it'll actually stick to the plywood, hence why it's called an iron-on edge band. 
the tools you want to use are some kind of razor scissors and a roller now they do make tools that go with the edge band it makes it a lot easier i think Once the edge band is set the way I want it, I grab a sanding block and I blend everything in so it looks more natural to the plywood. Off camera, I attach the drawer bottom using brad nails and reinforced screws. So to keep everything looking professional like we talked about, I'm going to add a couple coats of shellac on the inside so that way the drawer has a smooth feel to it instead of having that wood grain feel that you get from rough lumber. Now that I've finished the drawers, I'm going to put some paint on the bases of the nightstands. The paint I'm going to be using is the same pure white paint that I use for the farmhouse TV stand. Since these nightstands aren't very big, I was able to use my Wagner paint booth to catch all the overspray. It took about two coats to get everything the way I wanted it to look. To hold the drawers, I'm gonna use soft close drawer slides. To attach them, I set up two spacers of half inch plywood so I can put the drawer slide in the exact position I want. Once I had it there, I just drove in screws to keep it in position. And if you're ever interested in the tools or the hardware that I use for my builds, they're linked down below in the description. Installing the drawer is really simple. I used the same method I did to install the drawer slides. I left my little plywood spacers so that way I can set up the drawer exactly where I want it to be. Once I had the drawer in position, I started driving in the screws one at a time. Once enough screws are placed on the drawer, I remove it from the drawer slides and place all the rest of the screws. Now for the drawer fronts, I wanted to try something I haven't done before. So I'm gonna do shaker style doors. Basically the way I set it up is I cut a dado in between a one by four that I cut down to size. And I'm gonna make it just big enough to where I can put a quarter inch panel inside of it. Once I have everything cut down to size, I go ahead and sand everything down. It's just going to make it a lot easier to get in all those tight spaces. To assemble everything, I'm only going to use wood glue and clamps. I make sure to only put wood glue on the edges and not in the groove. To make sure everything stayed straight when I clamped it up, I used my speed square as a straight edge. So to plug the holes left over by the dados, I'm going to plug them up using the same quarter inch material I planed out earlier for the trim. Now it's going to have different end grain on it, but once I paint it, you're never going to know it was there. To make sure my drawer fronts have even spacing, I'm going to use the card trick so that way I can get that result. The way it works is you put the maximum amount of cards in the top slot until you can't fit anymore. Once you have that number, you split them in half and put them on the bottom. This is going to give you even spacing from the top and bottom. You repeat this method on the sides and it'll give you even spacing all the way around. Once I had the drawer front set the way I wanted them to be, I grabbed my Craig cabinet hardware jig and started lining everything up so I could install the hardware. 
This jig is really great when you want to repeat the location of the hardware. Once the holes were drilled for the drawer hardware, I attached them using screws. Alright guys, it's time to finish the top. So what we're going to do is grab some mineral spirits and wipe off any leftover sawdust. Since this is going in my bedroom, I wanted to match the barn door we put in there earlier. So I'm going to use that same ebony stain that I did on that. To apply the stain, I'm going to use a foam brush and I'm going to flood the surface. Once the entire tabletop is covered in stain, I'm going to wait three to five minutes, let everything sink in, and then I'm going to start wiping it off with clean rags. I let the stain sit for about a day or two, so that way I can make sure everything's fully dry before I add the top coat. The top coat I'm going to use is a water-based polyurethane made by Barathane. I'm going to put on three coats while sanding in between with 320 grit. The way I attach the tabletop to the base of the nightstand is with Z-Clips. Now, the reason I use Z-Clips is because they're supposed to be able to give you the ability to allow for wood movement on your tabletops. a farmhouse nightstand. Now if you like videos like this, please like and subscribe so you never miss the next video.